Hi there, welcome to the Upcycled Design Lab. My name's Cindy and I craft using recycled and repurposed materials. And today I thought I would share with you some tips on learning to use a microwave kiln. So I'm gonna share nine tips that I've learned from using my microwave kiln hundreds of times. Tip number one is to listen to your kiln and check it pretty frequently, especially when you're just getting started. Because during the heating process, the pieces can slip. A lot of designs are made by stacking glass pieces on top of one another and sometimes during the heating process they will slide apart. Um, I have not used this a lot but some people definitely uh, say that super glue is a good idea to glue your pieces together and I really like this uh, super well just because it uh, cures so quickly with this. Uh, light, it's light activated and it cures very quickly. So if you do want to try a super glue, I would recommend that one. Um, like I said, I haven't used it a ton, but I have tried it and it does burn off pretty quickly. So in my experience, your pieces might still slip a little bit, but it can help. And the other piece of this is that you want to listen to your kiln while it's heating up because sometimes your glass can break and you will hear kind of a popping sound. And when that happens, you want to stop the fusing process and check your kiln and see what's going on. You'll also hear a popping sound sometimes when you are letting the kiln cool down and that is in my experience perfectly um, normal and quite common and if you are in the cooling down process you can just ignore that but if you hear a popping sound while your piece is heating up you definitely want to stop the heating process and check the kiln. So whenever you're checking your piece to see how it's heating up, you want to carefully lift the lid straight off of the kiln, which will allow the heat to escape evenly. And you don't want to have the kiln top off too long. So you just take a quick peek at the piece and you replace the lid and either continue fusing or set your kiln aside to cool down. So tip number two is what I'm calling a hot method for repairing your piece. So if you've checked your kiln in the middle of your heating process and you notice that your pieces have slid off center and they're not where you want them anymore, you can carefully remove the piece from the microwave. So you wanna be working on a heat resistant surface and you're gonna take the top of the kiln, set it up so that the heat can escape, take your base and place it on a heat resistant surface Make sure you have your heat resistant gloves on and a pair of tweezers and you can slide your pieces back together the way that you want them to fuse. Now this only works if the pieces have just started heating up. So you'll notice that they're kind of dark and they are still very much holding the shape of the cut piece of glass. And once you have your pieces realigned, you can go ahead and set the base back in the microwave, set your top on, and continue fusing. Of course you want to be extremely careful because everything is very hot, so make sure you're working on a heat resistant surface, make sure you've got your gloves on, make sure that nothing is close to the top of the kiln which is very hot, and be sure to have some kind of tool to move the glass with. Tip number three is what I'm calling cold repair of your fused glass pieces and so in that case if you have a problem in the middle of fusing your glass you take the kiln out and let it cool down completely and then you can reassess the pieces once they're cooled down so for example i make a lot of glass beads to make these bracelets and the beads are supposed to look something like this where they have sort of a smooth top, a channel that goes hopefully somewhat through the middle, and they are kind of a flattened shape, but they have a nice channel to thread the beads through wire or string. I've tried some different fusing uh, methods to get to achieve this. Some are successful and some are not so successful. So in some cases, I've had the fusing paper not be covered with the glass. And so for these particular 
misfires, I would call them, I would just clean out the fusing paper and refuse this glass into another project because there is not really a repair that can be done. This one is an example of where the piece has definitely slipped and I have a couple of choices with this because my fusing paper for the channel to, to thread the bead is still intact. A lot of times it breaks apart because it is very delicate. So if you can keep the paper intact, one of my choices would be to use some super glue and try to put, put a little bit more glass over the top here where the seam is and fuse the piece again. I probably would choose not to do that just because it's going to make my bead get a little bit too large. So again, I might just break this down and use it for a different project. This one, however, is a perfect, perfect example of where you could continue the fusing process. This just did not get fused far enough. The kiln paper is still pretty well intact. And so I probably will pop this item back in the microwave kiln and let it fuse a little bit longer. I stopped the fusing process on this one because I had noticed that the other one was sliding so much and it had fused past the point where I could actually move it and fix it while it was still hot. The main point about this tip is that you can fuse the glass more than once. I've heard people say that there are, is a limited amount of times that you can actually refuse the glass and, and fuse it over and over. I've fused things multiple times and never really had any concerns about it just because I'm working with such small pieces of glass. And um, so I would encourage you to play around with that and not worry about if you've fused the glass once, you can definitely fuse it more than once if you want to change something, if you want to break something apart and start over, or if you just need to fuse it a little bit more in some cases. Tip number four has to do with how the glass heats up in the microwave kiln. And sometimes when you're checking your pieces, if you have more than one item or even sometimes across a, a larger item, you will notice that one portion is heating up faster than the other. And you'll notice that part of your glass may be dark and part of it may be starting to get that nice red orange glow. One way to avoid this is to try to make sure that all of your glass pieces have roughly the same weight. For example, you don't want to fuse a really small piece on one half of your kiln and a very large piece on the other half of your kiln. Now, you're not going to be exact on these things, and if your pieces are fusing slightly differently, most of the time that doesn't matter. If you do have items that are fusing at very different rates and you want to stop the fusing process on the smaller piece that's heating up more quickly, you can certainly take the kiln out, let it cool off, and then reheat the kiln to fuse your other piece separately. Tip number five has to do with how fast or slow you heat the glass. And in a microwave kiln, that is very tricky to control. But my point about that is that heating your microwave kiln for three minutes is very different than heating it for one minute plus one minute plus one minute. And so you do have a little bit of control as to how quickly your glass heats up. It's very unscientific, but you can attempt to fuse your glass a little bit slower by checking it more frequently. Sometimes in larger pieces, you can get little air bubbles, and I've gotten quite a few of them. Sometimes I work them into my design, and sometimes I just kind of let them be, but I have a th very unproven theory that heating the glass more slowly helps to eliminate some of those air bubbles. And so I would just encourage you to kind of test out your own theories about that and to experiment a little bit with your own heating schedules. Tip number six is the kiln paper, and it comes in a variety of sizes and shapes. I think you can get it on rolls. These two different sizes came with the different kilns that I've purchased. And it just goes on the base of your kiln to protect the kiln base from the heating and melting glass. So I have a couple of related tips regarding the fusing paper. 
First of all, I recommend cutting the fusing paper into squares and not a, sh a round shape just because I feel like it wastes a lot of the kiln paper. However, it doesn't protect the areas if your glass does slip. So it's certainly a personal choice, but my preference is just to quickly cut a square piece to protect my kiln base. The other thing is I always save my scraps because there are ways to make impressions in glass and you use small scraps in the making of the beads. So I just always make sure that I save the scraps of fusing paper. And the last tip is that generally speaking, the kiln paper is single use, meaning you fuse, you take the glass off and you throw the fusing paper away. However, it is possible to reuse the kiln paper at least two times. And often I do that when I'm adjusting pieces. If I haven't disturbed the kiln paper too much, I will reuse it. Sometimes I actually can take it out of the kiln and still reuse it. So this piece is a little bit deteriorated. You can see that it's broken, but I would consider this a piece of kiln paper that I could reuse. This other one is definitely more disintegrated and will I will just toss it. But if you are running low on kiln paper or you just don't like wasting things, you probably can get at least a couple uses out of, of several of your kiln paper sheets. Tip number seven has to do with the COE of glass. And if you've never heard that term, it can be a little intimidating, but it refers to the coefficient of expansion of glass. And different glasses have different coefficients of expansion. If you purchase glass, you will probably be able to determine the coefficient of expansion. And if you do a lot of glass fusing and you do bigger pieces, then I believe that the coefficient of expansion is a much more important thing to know. However, I have never known the coefficient of expansion of the glasses that I've used because I'm using recycled bottle glass. And I can only tell you that in my experience, I have been able to successfully mix the colors while fusing, and I've never really had any trouble with the pieces breaking. I'm assuming that's because I'm working with such small pieces of glass, but my tip is that if you don't know the coefficient of expansion of the glass that you're working with, you can still experiment with it and try to use it in your microwave kiln. Tip number seven is that all microwave kilns are very similar, but not, I would say, exactly alike. I started with this Fuseworks kiln and I've used it hundreds of times. And it is one of the more expensive kilns if you purchase one, but it also comes with the heat resistant gloves, a cutting tool, some glass, fusing paper. So you get the entire kit. And so you might find if you're just starting out that that is worth the investment. I recently purchased these other two kilns and the main difference between the two small kilns is that the working surface is slightly different, not notice, you know, not significantly, but this kiln does have a, a slightly smaller working space. It also takes a little bit longer to heat up, which is not really a concern, but it is just something that I noted when I was using these two kilns that are very similar in size. This kiln didn't come with any accessories and it was much cheaper, so it was one of the very cheapest kilns that I could find, and it does work just fine. I was also pretty excited about getting a bigger kiln, and the jury is still out on this one because I haven't used it a lot. I tried heating, uh, making some beads in this, and I heated this for 15 minutes, and I could not get it really hot enough. So I'm not sure if it's because I only have a thousand watt microwave. You might need to have a bigger microwave if you want to use the larger kilns. Um, I will definitely try it again, but like I said, I'm not sure about this larger kiln. For the most part, the pieces that I work on are pretty small, and these smaller kilns work very well for that. And just to give you a point of reference, the Fuseworks kiln takes about 
three minutes to heat most projects. And then depending on how much glass is in the kiln, I will heat that for another minute or two minutes, depending on how the fusing is going. This newer kiln takes four minutes to heat up. And then I usually end up heating another minute to two minutes again to finish the fusing. But it in general is about twice as long as the Fuseworks kiln. So my advice if you're looking for a kiln is that you can certainly get an inexpensive one, but you will need to invest in some of the other things that you that do come with the Fuseworks kiln if you buy the kit. Tip number nine is just some of my thoughts on repairing your kiln. Now, as I mentioned, I do a lot of square cut fusing paper, and sometimes the glass pieces do slip during fusing. And if you don't catch them quick enough, they can fuse to the kiln base, which is what happened to my Fuseworks kiln um, a couple of weeks ago. So you can see that I have a piece of glass that came off the kiln, but it took part of the kiln base with it. And so I wasn't sure what I was going to do. I, at first I kind of panicked and bought the other two new kilns. But there are a couple of videos out there that I will link to that other folks have done about how you can repair your kiln if you have damage to it, like I do here. My thoughts, however, are that initially when I did this, I, was ha I wasn't sure I was going to be able to continue using my kiln. But because my damage is off to the edge here where I don't usually have glass anyway, I have just been able to continue using this kiln as before. The other thing is that with newer kilns being so inexpensive, you probably want to look into the cost of just replacing the kiln if you do have more extensive damage to your kiln. But you can certainly check out the videos on how to repair the kilns as well. I hope you found some useful information in today's video. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed this content. If you haven't already, I'd love to have you join my YouTube family by hitting that subscribe button. You can check the description box for a place to sign up to receive the Upcycled Design Lab newsletter. And if you'd like to know more about fusing glass in your microwave kiln, check the links below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you back here soon in the lab for my next experiment.